Hi, this is Lindsay. Uh, welcome back. Hey, it's good to have you with us today. Well, we've been working through the Psalms using the acronym SOAP as our devotional method. SOAP being scripture, observation, application, and prayer. And today we're going to be looking at Psalm 92, uh, reading from the King James Version. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy, thy name, O Most High to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through, through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither does the fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shalt thou exult like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see my desire on my enemies, and mine ears shall hear my, my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. As we move to observation now, uh, I've subtitled the psalm, Those who are planted will flourish. Uh, and as we draw out a few key things from this text, um, first of all, uh, the psalmist is singing praises to the Most High God. Uh, morning and evening, he has reason to praise, for God is faithful, so he, uh, his experience of walking with the Lord has been one that God is faithful. And so that causes him joy, it causes him to sing, it causes him to uh, praise and tell others, in fact, by his singing. Every morning and every night, uh, uh, David, we know, was musical, and so upon an instrument of ten strings, there's some music involved in this. God has given him joy. He's made him glad because of the works of his hands, specifically triumph. Uh, and we know uh, David fought many battles, uh, but um, uh, the triumph is in the works of God's hands. So the, the credit, if you like, goes to God for being the one who gives victory uh, in all these situations. There's a contrast given between uh, the righteous and the wicked. In fact, uh, while God favours the righteous, the wicked will be cut off. Uh, so the psalm brings out a contrast between the two. Uh, but David, on the other hand, or, or, or the psalmist, on the other hand, says that he will be exalted, his horn will be exalted, that the horn was the anointing uh, ram's, uh, ram's horn or, or horn of an animal uh, that would be filled with anointing oil and poured out. And so that's the picture here, anointed with fresh oil. That, that speaks of God's power, God's presence, God, God's favour, uh, the anointing. And so... Um, victory, in, in, a, in a sense, is, is assured because God is with him. All those that rise up against him will not prevail. Uh, however, the righteous are flourishing, uh, planted like a, a cedar in Lebanon. Uh, and then it makes the transference from there that the, the comparison is that the planted, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish uh, in the courts of our God. So there's a, a place to be planted which is good for us. Uh, and it's uh, wherever God's presence is, that's the place to be planted. So verse 14, uh, the, the tree has been planted. Uh, trees just don't get up and go, they stay put. Uh, and verse 14 is a reference to this. Uh, they will still bring forth fruit in old age. They will be fat and flourishing. So there's a picture of health, 
uh, and just doing well being planted in the house of the Lord here. So God, uh, he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. So David has come full circle in stating that uh, God is for him, God has protected him, God has given him victory, his favour is upon him. Uh, and there's just this wonderful picture of blessing and staying planted in the house of the Lord and all that that brings. And so I guess the overflow of that is that he praises him. How do we apply this psalm to our lives? Well, the first place I want to go to is just this, this, uh, this thought of being planted. What does it mean to you to be planted in the Lord? Uh, there's probably a couple of types of plantings. One will be just the general planted in the Lord, but the other one will be planted in the house of the Lord. And I guess the expression of that is um, a, a local church, a local fellowship, somewhere where uh, you can put your roots down and grow. And uh, so what does that mean to you when you kind of think of uh, church and you think of involvement in church and you think of uh, are you highly involved? Are you just kind of nominal, just kind of, uh, you know, semi-committed as it were? Well, I don't know any semi-committed trees. All the trees I see uh, out there planted in the fields, they're staying there. Uh, and uh, especially if you look at the, the big ones, the ones with the big fat trunks, uh, they've been there many, many years. They, uh, for as deep as they are, as as tall as they are, um, potentially, you know, you, you've got to you've got to plant, uh, and then you will flourish. Uh, and I think that's the the lesson and the, the application is to uh, be in it for the long haul, uh, and um, you know, find a good church, and uh, be part of it. There's another aspect of this psalm to consider. Uh, and it's the faithfulness of God and it's the loving kindness of God. And I just question you, you know, what, what do you see in this psalm uh, regards that? And, and uh, uh, how would you testify to that? Uh, you know, whether you're in a, in a discipleship group situation and, and looking at this video or whether you're uh, just having some quiet time. Uh, just think of the loving kindness of God and, and uh, how that's played out and worked out in your testimony. Uh, think of the faithfulness of God and the fact that he's always been there for you. Uh, and, um, you know, what does that mean to you and, and how does that play out uh, day to day for you? Perhaps you're a little bit older, perhaps you're in that evergreen uh, stage of life and um, you've got years to look back on and, uh, you know, what an encouragement to know that uh, uh, you, you're still fruitful in older age. You've still got lots to offer. Uh, there's all that wisdom to tap into. Uh, and so what are some of the ways that you could be a blessing uh, to others with all that lived experience, with all that discipleship base to draw from? Uh, that would be a good question to kind of think about. Uh, even if you're a younger person and you're looking up to an older person, what are some of the things that you'd like to draw out of them and learn from? Uh, it'd be good to tease, uh, tease that out as well. So we've read the scripture, we've observed the scripture, we've talked about a few possible application points. Uh, now we can pray, pray into this psalm. Uh, so a suggested prayer might go like this, but of course you're most welcome to pray your own prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for your loving kindness and your faithfulness. I'm reminded of it every morning and every night. Thank you for what you've done in my life. I thank you that you've always been there. I thank you for your testimonies. Lord, I thank you for the blessing um, that you pour upon us, uh, how you exalt us, Lord God. And I, I thank you, Lord, for being planted in your house. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Uh, continue to make us grow and make us flourish in the courts of our God. Help us to bring forth fruit in old age. In Jesus' name, amen.